Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In the name of Allah, the beneficent, the most merciful. Praise be to Allah alone. We praise Him and we seek His help. Whomsoever Allah guides is the truly guided one. And whomsoever Allah leaves astray, no one can show Him guidance. Dear brothers and sisters, welcome to a new episode of Correct Your Citation. I'd like also to welcome our guests here at the studio as well. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. It is indeed our tradition to begin by uh, shedding some light on the meaning of the Quranic verses which we study uh, in this session, which we began in the last episode with another beautiful surah of the beautiful Quran, which is Surah Yasin. We recited about 12 verses of this beautiful surah, and now it is time to learn some of the meanings of these verses. And also I'd like to remind the viewers that we have a deal. This is your chance in order to memorize whatever we learn its meaning and learn how to recite it properly. So it is a golden opportunity. I highly encourage every one of you brothers and sisters, Arab and non-Arab, to join us in trying to catch up with memorizing those few verses of the Quran since we already now know their meaning. Let me recite... Uh, a few verses from the beginning of Surah Yasin, then insha'Allah we'll learn uh, the meaning of these verses. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem Bismillahir rahmanir rahim Yasin والقرآن الحكيم إنك لمن المرسلين على صراط مستقيم تنزيل العزيز الرحيم لتنذر قوما ما أنذر آباؤهم فهم غافلون لقد حق القول على أكثرهم فهم لا يؤمنون إن جعلنا في أعناقهم أغلالا فهي إلى الأذقان فهم مقمحون وجعلنا من بين أيديهم سدا ومن خلفهم سدا فأغشيناهم فأغشيناهم فهم لا يبصرون. Allah the Almighty says in the very first verse of Surah Yasin, the surah was named after the first verse of it. And this verse happened to be letters. How many letters, Mustafa? Two. Just two. It is very interesting that people differ with regards to the letters which Allah the Almighty began some chapters of the Quran with. There is 29 surahs in the Quran which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala began by certain letters. The total number of the letters without repetition is uh, 14. The numbers which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used to begin some surahs is 14 letters. And the surahs which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala began them with these letters are how many? 29, 29 surahs. So, those 14 letters, the scholars differed in their interpretation because there is no solid reference, no straightforward evidence that the word Yasin, for instance, means so and so. We have people who said that the word Yasin could be one of the names of Prophet Muhammad. Because it seems like he's calling on him, Yasin, O Muhammad. Similarly, they said Taha as well, yeah. one of the names of Prophet Muhammad. This is what they said. And that's why you find many people naming their children 
Yes, sons see. after Yasin and after Muhammad, assuming that these are names of Prophet Muhammad yes. Do we have any reference to that? No. no whatsoever. No. So accordingly, what is the actual meaning of these letters? Some of the closest said that Yasin, that Allah the Almighty is calling on the insan. Insan is mankind in general, saying, Oh mankind, listen carefully. Then he's going to make an oath. He's going mm-hmm. to swear. Well, Quran al Hakim. I swear to the Quran, which is full of wisdom. And as we spoke before about uh, the different views concerning, you know, the interpretation of those letters, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala began some surahs with, we came to the conclusion, which is the most valid view. That Doctor, the, f- go ahead. Um, but isn't it should be a kind of oath, Yasin, because it's there is wa, which is, which means and. No, and the wa in the beginning of the next verse, Muhammad is not an and wa. Uh, among the propositions in Arabic is the wa, literally means uh, and. So mm-hmm. it could be a proposition, not necessarily always. Sometimes when I say wallahi, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. Wow. It is the wow of the oath. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I swear by Allah or to yeah. Allah. Yeah. So the beginning of the oath actually is in the second verse, not in the first one. Mm-hmm. The most valid view and the interpretation of those letters that the scholars said, those letters, none knows their meaning but Allah the Almighty. So why did he begin the 29 surahs with them? The Quran is full of miracles. It is the everlasting miracle. And amongst its miracles is the linguistic miracle. It was revealed in Arabic to the most fluent Arabic speakers, the people of Mecca who are living in the peninsula, right? Mm-hmm. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed this Quran in Arabic in the most wise fashion, the most fluent way, and He revealed it to them on a prophet who happened to be illiterate. He did not go to schools. He doesn't know how to make poetry like them. They used to compete in this regard, so that when they would say, as they have said, oh, he made it up, Allah the Almighty would say, why don't you bring something that's similar to it? Or at least ten chapters like it. Or at least just one chapter, even if it is the, the smallest chapter mm-hmm. of the Qur'an. So that's why the, Allah the Almighty challenged the Meccans with the Qur'an, which was revealed in their own language in order to perfect the miracle and that challenge. And he began certain surahs with these letters in order to ask them and defeat them utterly by saying, aren't these letters from the 28 letters of your language? Yes. Could you tell me their meanings? I am the one who taught Adam all the different mother tongues and languages. They do have meanings, but they are preserved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and with him. Could you tell me their meanings? And that's why the scholar said, look at the challenge. In those surahs, for instance, Surah Al-Baqarah, which began by? Alif Lam Mim. Alif Lam Mim. Remember, those letters, we do not pronounce them. Rather, we pronounce their names. What difference does it make, Mustafa? If we pronounce their name, we will say Alif Lam Mim. But if it is the first one, we're going to say Alam. There was an Islamic uh, history professor who was sitting in a meeting and everybody was taking turns reading the Quran. So he began Surah Al-Baqarah by saying, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Alam. He was an Arab. So the Sheikh said, it is Alif Lam Mim with the Tajweed, six and six for the Lam and the Mim. He said, no, it's Alam. So he tried to correct him and he was insistent. He said, why? He said, look, didn't you read Surah Al-Sharh? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala began the surah by saying, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Alam nashrah laka sadara. And also surah al-Fil, Alam tara kayfa fa'ala rabbuka bi ashaab al-Fil. And this is a question, this is a totally different issue. So he was measuring this to that by analogy. Why? Because he did not hear the Quran once, he did not know the difference. So when we come, when we come to read those letters in the beginning of the surahs, we pronounce their names, not their pronunciation. We do not pronounce them because each letter 
has a name and has a way of its pronunciation. Yeah. But those letters, the 14 letters, in the beginning of 29 surahs, when we come to read them, we do not read them similar to other words by just pronouncing the letters. Like, take for example, the letter Alif, which is in the beginning of Surah Al-Baqarah, the beginning of Surah Al-Imran, and the beginning of Surah Al-Sharh, and the beginning of Surah Al-Fil. Right? But this is a different Alif. This is a different Alif. When I say Alam, then this is just a letter. But Alif, Lam, Mim, each one of those letters are letters of meant. Some of them would be lengthened for six counts. A must. Med lazim, compulsory. Right? Mm-hmm. So it has become a different letter. Those letters, some of them are measured in its lengthening two counts and some six counts, six counts. as we discussed before in the mudud. <coughs> now, let's check a few examples and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala presented this challenge to uh, the most fluent Arabic speakers, to the Meccans. He said, for example, in the beginning of Surah Al-Baqarah, after he said Alif Lam Mim, he said what? ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه هدى للمتقين Look at that challenge. This Alif Lam Mim, those letters are of your own letters. Do you know them? That is indeed the book, the Quran, which has guidance, which it's has guidance to the righteous ones. Also, in the beginning of Surah uh, Al Imran, Alif Lam Mim, then Allah the Almighty says, Allah la ilaha illa huwa al hayu al qayyum, nazala alaykal al kitaba bil haq. So it seems that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was using those letters to confirm the fact that this book is from Allah, that Muhammad, peace be upon him, right. did not make it up, nor was it revealed to him via the jinn or soothsayers. No, it is definitely from Allah. Another example, because we're running out of time, that in the beginning of Surah Ibrahim, the letters are Alif, Lam, Ra. The Ra is only two counts. Then, succeeding that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Kitabun anzalnahu ilayka. This is a book that we have revealed unto you, send it down upon you. Why? In order to take people out of darkness into light by the leave of the Lord. لتخرج الناس من الظلمات إلى النور بإذن ربهم إلى صراط العزيز الحميد well, and so forth now the scholars happen to put together those 14 letters without repeating them and they made up a beautiful statement this statement says نص حكيم قاطع له سر again مصطفى نص that's a text we're talking about those letters compiled together and they make up this phrase. Nasun means it's a text. Hakimun, wise. wise. And the Quran was described being full of wisdom repeatedly in the Quran. Qati'un, very precise, very accurate. There is no falsehood in it under any circumstances. No way. Lahu sir, that has a secret. And its secret is with the one who revealed it. Unfortunately, we ran out of time for this segment. But there is a lot to say concerning the word Yaseen, concerning the reason of the revelation of some verses in Surah Yaseen, and where was it revealed, and the reason, its contents. And we'll follow that by talking about you know, some very interesting facts about this beautiful surah, hopefully from next time, inshallah. Brothers and sisters, a short break. And inshallah, we'll return back very soon. So please hang around and stay tuned.